people it's your girl Adiola. First of all, my deepest apology to the lady that I called Antiramo in my last video. That's not her real name, but if you watched my last episode, you will know who I'm talking about. I'm really, really sorry, and I should not have made fun of her, regardless of whether reporters interviewed her or not. And thanks to everybody that commented about that video. I really appreciate you guys because you reminded me of my own values, especially in upholding women and standing up for women. So thank you so much. And if she ever sees that video, please accept my apologies. So I took down her video from my Facebook page and my Instagram page. I also edited it out of the last episode. So if you watch the last episode now, you will not see her video. Yes, you can edit something out of a video that you uploaded on YouTube. In the last eight years that I've been doing this show, I've never had to take out anything. So it took a while to figure out how to do that. And for other YouTubers who may be wondering how to edit out a part of your video, uh, I made a quick tutorial on how I did that. And the link is in the description below. The only thing is I will not stop making fun of politicians, especially corrupt politicians, those stealing our money. For those who may not be familiar with my show, it is a Tariku show. I talk a lot about heavy stuff, heavy news, sad things. And so I try to make people laugh so that they don't feel depressed. So let's start out with the good news this week. Doctors in Nigeria successfully separated conjoined twins at the National Hospital in Abuja. How amazing! That's awesome! 78 medical officers took part in the operation that lasted for 12 hours. And because of that, mercy and goodness, Ede, those are the twins, they can now live normal lives. The surgery actually happened in November of last year, but it took six weeks for the twins to recover and now they're fine. So the girls are the first to be successfully separated at the government-run specialist center in Abuja. We are so happy for them and their parents. Congratulations, guys. You know, I always knew that Nigerian medical practitioners can do wonders. I mean, we see them doing wonders here in the US. So we knew that all that they need back home is the right equipment. Even the lead doctor for this surgery, Dr. Emmanuel Ahmed, told CNN that it took a long time for them to prepare, partially because they had to get some equipment that were not readily available. So please, Nigerian government, uh, in Nigerian government, please equip our hospitals. We've been shouting about this for years. Equip our hospitals with all the nice gadgets that you see when Mr. President, for example, and his wife go abroad for treatment. Amen, somebody. In fact, we desperately need to renovate almost all our government hospitals in Nigeria. And you know, speaking of renovations, move closer. Um, I'm sure you guys saw Sahara reporters, pictures of the National Assembly that the Nigerian lawmakers want to renovate with 37 billion naira. That's more than 100 million dollars. And you know, from the picture, Sahara reporters is saying that the building doesn't look like it needs renovations. I'm like, um, wait, what? Like, so what exactly are they trying to do with the 37 billion naira? My father and my God. Now, to be fair, Sahara reporters are not architects or structural engineers. I'm just saying. So maybe it would be good to have engineers and architects help us to check the building just to be sure it will even make it way better i already know that they won't spend that much money on renovations there's no reason to even if it needs renovations that's seven billion are you kidding me but you know maintenance is also something that we don't do well in nigerian infrastructure all you need to do is look at our roads in nigeria we shouldn't wait till buildings collapse till we have big potholes on our roads before we do the needful having said that i wasn't surprised by what sarah reporters found maybe they don't actually need to renovate the building at all and if architects and engineers can confirm what Sarah reporters is saying then it would be even better if these lawmakers are not trying to steal money let them take engineers to show us exactly what they want to renovate gong gong she you take us there they will probably just do some some cosmetic works and then share the rest of the money which would not be a surprise for us because they've been doing this for a long time however the surprising thing is hearing that Nigerian soldiers are starving soldiers are starving on war front you know they don't have the right weapons till now and then Boko Haram keeps winning. It's actually not surprising anymore because so many of these soldiers have released videos of themselves suffering on the internet and the Nigerian government saw all these videos and we thought hopefully they've gotten their acts together. They're taking care of the soldiers, especially during this time of the so-called Mr. Integrity or Gabwari, you know, too well, you know, too well. So that's why I'm surprised that this is still happening. First of all, it takes a lot of courage for soldiers to come out and tell us what's actually happening to them. Kudos, kudos to the Nigerian soldiers because you know they can be demoted or face punishment, including jail time. Do you know that instead of providing weapons for these soldiers who complain, whenever they complain, the Nigerian government prefers to jail them. In 2014, 12 Nigerian soldiers were sentenced to death for mutiny because they didn't want to face Boko Haram without adequate weapons. Also, in 2017, 54 Nigerian soldiers were sentenced to death. They were accused of cowardice and refusing to fight.
fight and it's all because they didn't have the weapons that Boko Haram had they didn't have the adequate weapons so to see that this is still happening to our soldiers that they are starving is heartbreaking Nigerian government please see how governments in other countries are taking care of their soldiers this is why you would find so many Nigerians gladly serving in the military of other countries but these same people will not serve in the Nigerian military they actually enjoy so many benefits serving in other countries Nigerian government have some shame that is all we are asking just have some shame the only thing is some of our Nigerian soldiers too I beg you, you know, you cannot, because of the hardship that you're facing, be extorting money from civilians. How about, we've been shouting about this now. This past Monday, there was a Boko Haram attack in Bonu, and after fighting and killing three of the Boko Haram members, do you know that the soldiers allegedly set up a checkpoint, and they started asking uh, civilians to show their national ID, and those that didn't have their national ID, do you know that they were charging them 1,000 naira or 1,005? I'm like, what? So even if some of them were Boko Haram members, so like as they gave them 1,000 naira, they let them go. I'm like, what the heck? And then when the governor of Bono heard about this, he went there undercover to see what was happening. He was wearing just a shirt and a pair of pants. And then after seeing what was happening, he sent for his convoy. There was a fight for two hours. He had three Boko Haram were killed. Their cops are still with us. Nobody is disputing this. That was what caused no, the lockdown. We understood. Nobody is disputing this. That was what caused the lockdown. We, nobody is disputing this that they was attacked. I've seen corpses that were killed by Boko No, Haram. this morning. This morning, yes. Now, but what I'm General. saying now is that we General. have seen it. All General. of us General. are witnesses now. Hundred people are going like that. People are collecting money. Sorry. 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 I'm reporting anybody in this world. People are collecting one thousand. No woman we can accept. Since morning, Boko Haram is attacking me. And again, the general military and soldiers and police and food money are taking about the one thousand Arab. One thousand five hundred from one thousand five from each and every person, passenger who doesn't have national ID card. Why would soldiers be collecting money from civilians in the name of national ID? Ah, and you know, Eberolo, Eberolo, and you bother soldiers. Bernie, Eberolo, we are trying to fight for you, Nigerian soldiers, but you are making it hard for people to fight for you, Jerry. You cannot be doing that to civilians. Uh, and you know, it's not just soldiers in Bonu that are collecting money. Did you guys hear that immigrants are illegally entering Nigeria through Sokoto just by paying 200 naira to custom officers? I'm like, what? I saw Buhari close the borders recently. What happened? Happened? What happened? So how is it possible that people are sneaking in with 200 naira, 55 cents? Nigerian custom officers see a bed were long. So Koto borders Niger Republic. No, be so. And please, I'm not saying that people from Niger are terrorists. I am not. No. But there has been several reports that Boko Haram members are able to recruit people from Niger. In fact, members of a gang in Niger once told BBC that they collaborate with Boko Haram in exchange for money. We've made contact with a local gang whose members claim they are collaborating with Boko Haram. They've agreed to talk to us, but we can't show their faces. The gang members are all in their early 20s. They've told us that five of their group have joined the Nigerian militants. Two have already been killed on operations. Now that report was 2014. This has been happening for years now. So collecting 200 naira just makes it easy for Boko Haram to recruit. Then customs, stop doing us like this. Now how much is 200 naira? That you now compromise the security of the, of the country. It's very important for people to go through the proper channel of entering a country. We've said this several times. And not just for those that are trying to go to Nigeria, but the rate at which so many young people in Nigeria today are desperate to leave the country in search of greener pasture is heartbreaking, especially when they go to Arab countries. No offense to Arab countries, but there is racism against black people in so many of those countries. I've done a video about how Africans are treated in Saudi Arabia, especially when they go there for domestic works, especially women who go there for domestic works. I've talked about how Africans are being sold as slaves in Libya, and I'm sure that many of you this week saw the video of this woman who was pleading for help recently in Lebanon. Cooking shake, kitty, came in my boluku. 
For real, people are going through a lot. She said that so many of her colleagues have already died. Huge kudos to the Nigerian government for their swift response, especially Madam Abike Dabri, who responded quickly on Twitter that they are working on getting her out of Lebanon. In fact, Madam Abike Dabri announced that the alleged trafficker had been arrested. Thank you to the Nigerian government for doing that. And I really hope that she gets out alive. Please pray for her while we wait for the update. But you know, there are so many others in her shoes, many of whom we would never know. So when we tell people that when you want to go abroad, because me, I understand the frustration why so many people want to leave the country. There are so many young people that will do anything to leave the country. As a matter of fact, I've talked about the fact that some of these people actually pay the traffickers to get them out of the country. They pay huge amount of money. People pay huge amount of money to go to Libya, where so many of them end up as sex slaves. So I understand why people are frustrated and they want to leave the country, but you need to be careful. At least go to a country where you understand their language. It doesn't mean they have to speak English, but at least you should understand. It just makes life easier for you. And if you go to any country whatsoever and someone takes your international passport, cry out. Do not leave the airport until you collect your international. Do not let anybody. If anybody has taken your international passport, know that you are in danger. You need to find your way out of the ASAP. Don't wait until you become a slave. As soon as somebody tries to take your passport or as soon as they forcefully take your passport, cry out for help. Up. That place is not safe for you. But you know, as much as we try to persuade people not to fall victim, it's also very important that we fix our own country. Amen, somebody. Like, I'm sure that you guys have seen this report that Nigeria had the biggest drop in visitors to the U.S. in 2019 because of Trump's visa policies. You know, Nigeria recorded the largest global drop-off, as in, in the entire world, the U.S. denied more Nigerians visas than people from any other country. And do you know that they collected money from all these applicants in Nigeria? In fact, the U.S. has increased their visa processing fees now, and it's non-refundable. So they are just using Nigeria to make money now. 34,000 fewer Nigerians travel to the US compared to the previous year. So we really need to fix our country, man. And you know, I don't know what else our officials need. I wish that they would deny all our officials visas. Then from the president to the governor, the ministers, the senators, all of them. In fact, all Western countries and all the Middle Eastern countries like the UAE should deny them visas. Maybe then they will do the right thing and fix our country. The only thing is those countries are smarter than we are, so they let them come into command spend the money that they are stealing from Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, you guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> so, moving on to Angola, ladies and gentlemen. The so-called richest woman in Africa, 46-year-old Isabel Dos Santos, is presently being investigated for the source of her wealth. Last month, an Angolan court froze uh, the account, the assets of Isabel Dos Santos, as part of an anti-graft campaign amid allegations of nepotism under the 38-year rule of her father. 38 years. I'm talking about Jose Eduardo Dos Santos. If you remember, her father made her the head of Angola's national oil company, that is Sonago, in 20 2016. So Nago is the company that oversees the petroleum and natural gas production in all of Angola. It consists of so many subsidiaries. That's like their own NNPC in Angola. And the president put her daughter in charge. That's audacious, you know. Now, her office allegedly transferred an enormous amount of foreign currencies abroad while she was in office. And you know, she became the richest woman. Actually, she became the richest woman before she was even in that position. She's worth $2.2 billion. $2.2 Two billion dollars. Oprah Winfrey is worth 2.6 billion dollars. And we know that she worked for it. So, but Isabel was forced out by her father's successor after he came into power in 2017. And now she's been investigated. Angola is still in recession, by the way. And you know, so many people believe that Angola is in recession because her family personalized the country's wealth. Meanwhile, she said that they are just witch hunting her, trying to make her a scapegoat, uh, and that all of this is happening as an attempt to demand diminish her father's influence in Angolan politics. You know, the allegations are false allegations. There is um, a drive in Angola uh, in, within the political party, within the MPLA, to neutralize um, President Dos Santos' for, um, influence in, in, political, in Angolan political life, in very much challenging his legacy. Um, recently, his um, uh, image was removed from the Angolan currency, from the banknotes, that his legacy um, should be altered. 
okay um let me know what you guys think about this are they just haters hating on her and her family or you think that her and her family should be investigated let me know what you guys think in the comment section below you guys don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real <laughs> Moving on to Kenya. Did you hear that Al Shabaab attacked a US military base in Kenya? Now we're heading to Kenya where three Americans were killed in an attack on an anti terrorist base in the southern coastal region. Islamic militants stormed the Manda Bay airfield in the country's Lamu region on Sunday, a base used by US and Kenyan forces. Okay, I didn't even know that the US has a base in Kenya, although I know they have a huge base in Djibouti. So three Americans were killed in this attack, and they also killed killed five Al-Shabaab members. Man, Al-Shabaab has been staging attacks in Kenya now for years. It's heartbreaking to see that this is still happening. You know, our deepest condolences to those who lost their loved ones in this attack. May their souls rest in peace. But of course, they're not just staging attacks in Kenya. Their main operating base is in Somalia. In 2016, I remember talking about a Somali family that moved from Canada to Somalia to help build the country and to help promote peace in Somalia. A brave woman, Fatun Adan, who whose husband was killed by Al-Shabaab in the 90s, went back to Somalia from Canada with her daughters, all of them making a huge impact in Somalia. And they've been back now for years. This woman and her daughter, all of them Canadian citizens, they've been risking their lives for years to build other lives. So I was really shocked when in November of last year, I heard that her eldest daughter, Almas Elman, was killed by a bullet on her way to the airport. It's heartbreaking. Almas was only 31 years old and she was four months pregnant when she died. It's heartbreaking. I can't even imagine what her family is going through right now as well as her husband. I mean, she only got married in 2017. I'm talking about the famous Zakaria Hesse. That's her husband, a Swedish Somali citizen. Please accept our condolences. So to think that her dad, Elman, was gunned down in 1996 because he was promoting peace in Somalia as a social activist means that the family is reliving the same tragic event of losing a loved one to gun violence in Somalia. Somalia. Their father was the one that coined the famous mantra in Somalia, uh, drop the gun, pick up the pen, and he was killed by Al-Shabaab for that. Our hearts are with the entire family. Please accept our condolences. And do you know that all his children are making huge impact, not just Almans who died. Another of their daughter is Ayman Elman. When she moved to Somalia, she actually enrolled in the Somali army to physically fight Al-Shabaab. Please watch our 2014 TED talk called Fighting Al-Shabaab as a Woman in Somalia. I'll put the link in the description below. You know, among other things, she talked about how their mom raised them to never think less of themselves because they are women. When my father passed away, my mother raised me and my sisters in uh, Canada. She always raised us to let us know that this isn't a man's world and that you should never allow someone to lower you or belittle you based on your gender. Not anything that a man can do, I could do as well. If not, I should be able to do it better. <laughs> and, <laughs> wow. Again, huge shout out to their mom. And hopefully women watching me out there would learn a lesson from this. Please teach your daughters that they can be anything, that they should not place any limitations on themselves because of their gender. And I love the fact that she's using her story and her, her courage to teach so many young people in Somalia. I jokingly mentioned that, you know, what if I joined the army? And what surprised me is how quick they were to respond. And they said that, you know, no, it's not okay for you to join the army. And if you do decide to join the army, the only jobs that are available for you are more of the domestic roles, such as cooking and cleaning for the troops. <laughs> it surprised me that, you know, 15, 20 young adolescent boys are able to just have that mentality in their head without second guessing or without thinking, what, okay, what is she capable and what is she able to do? It's heartbreaking to see that a lot of young people already have that mindset from teenage years. People have that mindset. You need to, we need to retrain the minds of so many young people. Do not ever look down on anybody because of their agenda and do not ever place any limitations on yourself because of your agenda. You did not choose your agenda. You didn't choose to have big chest or whatever on your bottom. <laughs> or flat chest, whatever it is that you have, you didn't choose it. So just embrace who you are and make the best of the life that you have been given. It's a privilege to be alive, to be breathing. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, you're a human being created in the image of God. So make the best of your life. It was really hard for her in a country where women make up only 7% of the military. Today, she is a captain in the Somali National Army, leading a team of soldiers, liberating towns and villages from the control of Al-Shabaab. I cannot describe word for word what it was like serving in the front line 
But I will tell you that, it, you know, it, it, it was never easy. Our, our job was probably one of the most difficult parts of the military. We'd spend majority of our time seeking or searching for the Al-Shabaab itself. And uh, once we, we'd spend long hours in battle, once we completed a single battle, then we'd end up being deployed to a different location where we'd try to find, you know, more Al-Shabaab. And another daughter that I really admire is Ilwad Elman. She's also an activist and the director of programs and development at the Elman Peace Center, which her mom founded in Mogadishu, Somalia. Oh, by the way, Ilwad was appointed by the UN Secretary General as an advisor to the UN Peace Building Trust Fund. Yes! And also, she's the youngest advisor to ever serve on this board since its founding. Ilwad additionally serves as a member on UNICEF's Global Board for the Generation Now Initiative, and she was a shortlisted candidate for the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize and she's 30 years old so it was a huge honor for me when I met her in South Africa in 2018 these are the people that we should celebrate in Africa despite the death of their father and now their sister her family continues the peace building work that they're doing in Somalia changing lives one at a time regardless of what's happening right now with Al Shabaab with with people like this we know that Somalia has a bright future ahead and huge kudos to them may the soul of Almas continue to rest in peace you guys don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real now, before I sign out, I want to thank every one of you that voted for Kawa Foundation, the Kipniru with Adela Foundation, to win the money that Send Wave was going to donate to one foundation of your choice. And I am so, so excited to tell you that we won! Yeah! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Apparently, we won by more than 70% of the vote. I was like, I cannot believe. Oh, this much love. Thank you. Thank you so much. And guess what? More than 9 people used the promo code making it possible for Kawa Foundation to win $4,620. Yeah, so thank you so, so much for voting for us. That is 1.6 million naira. Yes, 1.6 million and 30,000 naira. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, guys. Mm. This money, you have no idea how it will change lives. We're so excited. We're so, so grateful. And in the next episode, I will be announcing our next outreach that will be possible because of this fund. And thank you to those who use the promo code SEO. So you know now. Thank you so much, guys. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So like I said earlier, the video of Ayman Elman TED Talk will be in the description below. Also, the video that I made on how to edit something out of a video will be in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe if you're yet to. And thanks to all those that have subscribed. We really appreciate you guys. As usual, I'm wearing an outfit from xnative.com. If you have not ordered an outfit from xnative, I don't know what you're doing. Or if you're yet to order something for your wife, your girlfriend, your mom, your sister, your niece, your whatever, order something for the women in your life. Amen, somebody. <laughs> and you know, Valentine's is coming next month okay you may want to get your orders in early in any case don't forget that they're giving away 20 percent discount if you use the name adiola as promo code i believe that ends at the end of this month so you might want to take advantage of that now before it ends 20 percent discount is not small money okay <laughs> all right y'all don't forget to subscribe if you're yet to it's been real and i'm keeping you right up in here don't forget to follow me on facebook twitter and instagram until next time i will see you all later peace out